back to the YouTube channel. It's your boy, Mr. Ghana, baby, and I'm back again with another episode right here in Accra, Ghana. And it's all about I left America to do something here in Ghana. At long last, the battle has ended. And thus, Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. Boss, good morning. Good morning. Hey, hey you look so straight, too. <laughs> yeah, it looks so straight. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Maya, and um, I'm from Taprati. Okay. And um, do you know how I got to know you? I don't even know you. I'm, I'm yet to know you. But um, I went to the ANC mall, the first ever mall that was built in Ghana. And then I flew my drone and I got to see solar panel on top of the building. So I had to ask the owner, who did this? And he said, you are the brain behind it. So I had to reach out to you. I mean, come and talk to you. Let me know, like, what really inspired you to start something like this here in Ghana? Well, um, my background is power systems. You know, you mm -hmm. said you're from Takrady. I'm also from Takrady. You know, so hey, you're from Takrady. I'm from Takrady. You know, I grew up in Takrady. You know, young Christian, GSTS, uh, US came back. Big power uh, generation systems in the military uh, came back home and set up a company called Sun Power Innovations. So we do solar, uh, and um, uh, we have more footprint than most of the solar companies at the moment. We have about 10 megawatts, and uh, that's how you know we came into contact with uh, Edmund. You know, this is just like a brief, let's go into details. Mm -hmm. You're born in Takrati. You studied in GSTS, and after GSTS, what happened? I went to the US. To do what? I to go to school. Oh, okay. Yeah. And after school in the U.S., what did you do? Well, I I, I served in the military, and after my service, oh, okay. I, in U.S. military. Yes, yes, yes. And then after after service, I I came home, you know, to give back. You know, so, so it, it came home to give back as in. I mean, this is where it all started. You know, what motivated me actually was the fact that you know the power situation in Ghana was wasn't you know that all good. that all that good wasn't all that there you know so what is the best solution and from my uh, travels around the world the best solution was solar you know so that's what motivated me to come back and do some power innovations wow you know like i i just wanted to say that what you did or what you've been doing is amazing because you know in Ghana the power situation is not all that good. But I just wanted to know something in here. You live in the state. I mean, you're in the military. You're living your best life, and um, you decided to leave all that and come solve Ghana's problem. I just wanted to know: is everything okay with you? <laughs> of course, I'm okay, right? You know. No, unless you tell me, you know, <laughs> because I, you know, I've, I've been talking to a lot of yeah. um, Africans that are living in the diaspora, telling me that when I left Ghana, mm -hmm. Ghana was not good, mm -hmm. and I'm definitely not coming back because I don't think I, I need to um, solve the problems of Africa. The politicians need to do that. Mm -hmm. But you saw the problem, and now you came to solve it, yeah. which is incredible. Mm -hmm. Well, there are problems everywhere, anywhere in the world. You know, whether so, it's U.S., Europe, China, wherever. What was the problem that you faced when you were in the U.S.? Uh, many, you know. Uh, just like here, you have to get a job, you have to pay your bills, you have to um, deal with systems that sometimes might not favor you. The same uh, systems we face here. You know, well, you so know, like, it, it seems you're trying to talk in parables, yeah. and system, and system, and system. What kind of system are you talking about in here? Systems. Yeah, the I system, mean. I mean, the system that you said, a system in the U.S. that cannot favor you. No, you know? no not necessarily. So, let me put it this way. Perfect. Coming back home is not easy. It Thank has you. to be a, a, there has to be a motivation to it. Mm. Um, you, you transition it from a place where everything is structured mm. and everything depends on 
your performance, you know, and your ability to deliver. Back home, even when you don't deliver, you have an auntie or an <laughs> uncle, you can go and eat fufu in their, in their place, right? Uh, so these, that's an advantage for coming back home, you know. Um, but the motivation should be you coming back to better a place that didn't look like where you live currently, you know, because uh, in the U.S. everything is, is uh, developed, everything is there. The systems work. Power is stable. Water is stable. Accommodation is there. So long as you work hard, you can have a comfortable life. But is it the same here? You know, uh, the basic necessities of man is food, shelter, and clothing. Is it the same for everyone living in Africa? It's not easy transitioning to a place where you, you know you're going to start all over. Yeah. But like I said, it has to. It has to. There has to be a motivation. Yeah. And that same motivation that drives you to deliver over there in the U.S. or wherever you find yourself mm. is the same motivation that you need to have when you come back. And uh, I believe if you do that, uh, you'll succeed here. And how long have you been here? It's been about four and a half years since I've been back. And um, you came back, immediately you came back, you started the company or? Yeah, I mean, I... I I set up the company while I was still in the U.S. So um, I went back to the U.S. a year. I came back and I decided to settle and make sure that uh, the business grows. And I've not, I've not regretted doing that. Um, it's and been a challenge, but it's been a fulfilling challenge. You know, I just wanted to ask you, but I think you've actually answered me. I wanted to ask you, did you regret coming back home? And I think you, you've already answered me. No, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's been fulfilling. I love it. You love, I love it. it? Yeah. What was the, um, I mean, let's talk about the challenges coming back in here mm -hmm. in terms of acquiring the land, setting up your own business and all that. Because I know there are so many people out there who are looking forward to be just like you. Mm -hmm. What was the major challenges that you faced when you came over here? Well, you don't know any, anyone. It's been a long time since you left, you know. Um, and you have to learn the environment completely, you know. So, and adjusting is when I came, I didn't even know Accra, you know. So, I'll, I'll tell someone I'm coming here, but I will circle and circle. So, a, a trip of 20 minutes would take two hours, you know. And <laughs> so, these are some of the challenges. Uh, there is nothing like you know, there's no venture capital, there's no angel investors, you know, so it has to, you have to be driven to survive. And um, I think, I think uh, I should give kudos to uh, the microfinances that used to exist. Some of them helped us to establish. Um, and, and so here we you, are. So you're trying to say this is a Ghanaian owned? Completely Ghanaian owned. And you are the brand behind it. Yeah. So I, I founded this company and um, I think two years down the line, we, because of all the good works we were doing, we got another um, um, investor who is also Ghanaian American. So he brought, he came to invest in us, so he injected equity. And I think last year, we kept growing at a very fast pace. So we also got um, another investor from the US. Uh, he, he's not Ghanaian, but uh, he's, he's, he's lived here when he was a kid. He actually lived here uh, before, so he knew the environment. So yeah. looking at what we did, he got motivated. And so it's three shareholders right now. Are you still looking for investors? Absolutely. And it, so it, means, like, it needs to be a listed company. Like, I need to invest in your company. Since you're from Takra, I need to invest in <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're selling shares. You can buy it. Definitely. <laughs> uh, you know, like I've got so many people who are looking forward to invest in Africa. Mm -hmm. So definitely, if you want to tell them something, it's okay. I, I, I know they're ready. Okay. So you just have to, if, you, if you're looking for investors, just feel free and tell oh, them. Sure. I mean, uh, we're a team of young people. Um, like I said, we've done about 10 megawatts. In a very short period, we, we have the largest footprint in Ghana. We have ambition to go to other African countries. 
because yes, Africa is not connected to the grid. We have other parts of Africa that still, you know, struggle with power problems. Uh, so we that the goal and objective is to go to these countries also. So we want to expand. Um, so if you're out there and you want to be part of some power innovations and, and join a young um, winning team, you are welcome to join us. Do you have competitors? Absolutely. It's a very competitive space. Is it a Ghanaian, is it Ghanaian competitors or foreigners? Both. Both. You have wow. Ghanaians that are you know, thriving in this industry and you have, because you know Africa is dark, when I say dark, I say not bad dark, but yeah. um, you know, it's not connected to the grid, so there's no light. Yeah. So because of that, uh, there's opportunity in, in power here because of that gap. So you have most companies from America, Canada, Europe, Asia, all trying to come into the space, which is good. So that is what brings the competition. But at the end of the day, uh, we are local content and there are laws that protect local content also. So, yeah. so we, we need the exposure and the experience. Um, at the same time, we also have to protect local content. So, so every, everyone is welcome to the space. There is a saying that Africa for Africans, mm -hmm. and I know that there are a lot of African brothers living in the diaspora mm -hmm. who are also looking for what to come back home, mm -hmm. invest in the continent. Mm -hmm. You as a brother, if you want to talk to your fellow brothers and sisters watching us right now, mm -hmm. what would the message be? Well, uh, welcome home anytime you want to. Uh, there, there are opportunities here that you cannot find. Um, in the uh, outside the diaspora, uh, for example, if you want to do solar, you, you have to compete with maybe Solar City in America, which is a huge multi-million uh, or multi a billion-dollar business. So how are you going to compete with them? But in Africa, it's green. Uh, you come here, you work hard, you can build uh, and grow at a very fast pace compared to what you could do in a very developed environment. So it's time to muster courage and come home and also give back. It's not just coming to make money, make money. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more of giving back. And I think in the process of giving back, uh, you, you can be successful. You know, like I really wanted to do this video in 10 minutes, but I think it's going to exceed 10 minutes. I have a last person to ask sure. you. You're always talking about giving back, giving back. Are you, gonna, are you trying to say that they shouldn't come and look for jobs, but they should rather come and create jobs? That's what you're trying to say. <laughs> Where are the jobs? <laughs> You need to come and create the jobs, create the opportunity. There are opportunities here, but we need that exposure that you guys have. We need that money that you guys have. We need that connections that you guys have to, to build the space. Um, the opportunities are here, tremendous opportunities, but um, we need the right people to come and harness it. And so it becomes a big part for everyone. Uh, Mr. Minza, I just wanted to know something. You said. Whenever you're coming to Africa, you need to come and create jobs. Mm -hmm. I just want to know how many people have you employed so far? Uh, we are about 60. 60? Yes. Wow. And all yeah. of them get a paycheck from you. Of course. So can you employ me? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pay you. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what is this? This, this, this is so, so these are inverters. These are um, residential inverters. Uh, this box is a 5 kilowatt. So you combine two, you get 10 kilowatts. And uh, as you can see, this, this whole office is on solar. So you are enjoying the solar, all the air conditioning, you don't, you don't, everything. You don't pay electricity bills? No, we don't. We don't. I need to we, get this for my mom. We, we generate our own power. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And how much does it cost maybe for this whole building? How much is it going to cost me? Oh, it, it's, it depends. It depends. <laughs> You know, if, if you want to it's know, affordable. That's what you want to know. It's affordable, um, and it's um, it's long term, so you have to. It's be, it's affordable, even though it's long term. It's 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 very affordable. So you think I can afford? Because these systems are quality systems. You know, we don't we sell tier one in the solar space. Tier one means it's done very well. I mean, it's mm. it's, it's uh, uh, worldwide. You know, that's what most countries are using, and so. You can find this box in the U.S., Germany, Australia, China, anywhere. So we're using the same standards globally, you know. Um, how will you go? But a message for Africans on the continent. Um, let's stay together. I think we can.
and do it. It's challenging, uh, but we need to stay together. Our borders need to be open. Uh, we need to do business together. We need to love ourselves, and uh, I think the sky is the limit. There is nothing uh, below us or beneath us. We, we can rise up above any uh, obstacles. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.